please stand. Good morning and welcome to St. Augustine's Parish as we celebrate the First Holy Communion. Today is a blessed day for the people of our parish, especially for all of our children who for the first time will join us in Holy Communion. Let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, to prepare ourselves to worthily celebrate the sacred mysteries, we must first call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses told the people, don't forget how the Lord your God led you in the desert for 40 years. The Lord did this so that you would learn to depend on him, and he wanted to know if you were truly willing to obey him. The Lord made you go hungry, then he gave you manna, a kind of food that you and your ancestors have never heard about. He did this to teach you that people need more than food to live. They need every word that the Lord has spoken. The Lord your God brought you out of Egypt where you were slaves. He led you safely through a big and terrible desert that was full of poisonous snakes and scorpions. The Lord gave you water from solid rock, and in the desert he gave you manna a kind of food your ancestors have never heard about. He tested you like this to teach you to depend on him so that all would go well for you. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. This day was made by the Lord. Let us rejoice. This day was made by the Lord. Let us rejoice. What must I give you, Lord, to being so, to being so good to me? I pour out an offering of wine to you and pray in your name because you have saved me. This day was made by the Lord. Let us rejoice. 
I will offer you a sacrifice to show how grateful I am, and I will pray. I will keep my promise to you when your people gather at your temple in Jerusalem. This day is made by the Lord. Let us rejoice. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I have already told you what the Lord Jesus did on the night he was betrayed, and it came from the Lord himself. He took some bread in his hands. Then after he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Eat this and remember me. After the meal, Jesus took a cup of wine in his hands and said, This is my blood, and with it God makes his new agreement with you. Drink this and remember me. The Lord meant that when you eat this bread and drink from this cup, you tell about his death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowds of Jews, I myself am the living bread come down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he shall live forever. The bread I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. At this, the Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can he give us his flesh to eat? Thereupon Jesus said to them, Let me solemnly assure you, if you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. He who feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has life eternal, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood real drink. The man who feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the Father who has life sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so the man who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and died nonetheless, the man who feeds on this bread shall live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. Very special day for our second graders. They've been preparing for this for over a year. Now on Mondays, they're also teaching the first grade how to behave in church. So they're kind of examples for us all today. For today, they enter into the great mystery of the blessed sacrament, Holy Communion. As the first reading today reminds us, when Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt from slavery to the promised land, they were fed with bread from heaven, manna from God. Christ uses that imagery before he enters into his passion, death, and resurrection to remind us that he will continue to feed us in a greater way with his physical presence in our lives, that he will institute the Eucharist on Holy Thursday night at the Last Supper so that every generation can participate in this great mystery of the love of God 
that allows us to become one with him in the sacrament of Holy Communion. The sacrament wasn't always available to children. The early 1900s, you had to be at least 12 years old to receive First Holy Communion. But there was a little girl in Ireland, they call her Nell of God, who at four years old was able to explain the mysteries of the Eucharist like no one else really could. And Pope Pius X at the time learned of little Nell and realized the age of reason is around second grade. Children should be given the opportunity to enter into relationship with Christ as soon as they are able to try to understand it. And that's what our second grade has been doing, trying to understand this great mystery of the Eucharist that we enter into, that God so loved us that he wanted us to always know of his presence and to strengthen and nourish us with his own physical being. We enter into that mystery every time we receive Holy Communion. Because this gift that has been given to us is for our salvation so that we learn how it is that we can serve God in this world, how we learn that we have to be good because we want to enter into the promised land ourselves one day. We want to make it to paradise when this world is over. And to do so, we have to learn to follow Christ, and sometimes we need his help to do that. We receive Holy Communion. Because priests always understand that sometimes little children have an innate sense of wanting to receive. There are often the toddlers being carried up the aisle at Sunday Mass. As their parents are receiving, they reach for the sacrament themselves. Or sometimes they say, I want that. I often had a child who every Sunday would say, I need that. Very true statements. There's a relationship with our Creator that is present in the Eucharist that we will never fully understand, but sometimes pure hearts can feel the attraction to Him. Sometimes when we enter into the church, just being in His presence in the tabernacle gives us calmness of soul. We realize that the presence of God is here, and we have nothing to fear in this world. And that's an important lesson for our second graders because as they mature, we don't know what the world will look like for them. But we do know that God is with them, that they have a relationship with their Creator so intimate that He becomes one with us in the Blessed Sacrament. So as we prepare our second graders for this final preparation of their receiving the Blessed Sacrament, I would ask them to please stand because we're going to now renew the promises that were made at your baptism. You will respond, I do. Do you reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Now, if everyone could stand for the prayer of the faithful. <laughs> Who's doing the prayer of the faithful? Come on. <laughs> There we are.
Today we pray together, especially for these children of our community of St. Augustine, who for the first time will receive the risen Lord, the bread of life. Responses, Lord, hear our prayer. That as our, that as our first communicants receive the Eucharist, for the first time we may remember Pope Francis or Cardinal Timothy Dole, or a priest at St. Augustine, Father McSweeney, Father Ferreira, and Father Matthew, and our deacons, as they help us know Jesus better, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leader that all Lord, hear That God may bless our communities, their parents, family members, and teachers, and all who have taught us about the Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us that we become one in body and spirit with our Lord today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. that we give special thanks for all God's mercy and gifts to us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all deceased members of our family who now enjoy eternal life with Jesus in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, hear our prayers for these children and their families. May your Son, Jesus Christ, come to them today more fully. May his life in them bring peace, joy, and love to all those around them. For we ask this through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated for the offertory.
stand and pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. just. Truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. When we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer to you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, 
with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. stand. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. But if Christ be safe at the last day.
Let us pray. Please stand. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life which is foreshadowed in this present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 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 Just a few last words. Thank you to the teachers and the administration of our school who helped us prepare for this day and all they did. The choir who came in to sing for us, our altar servers, were always gracious in their service to the church. I hope the pictures portray the awe and respect that your children portrayed in receiving their first Holy Communion. They've been waiting for this day for a long time, and they reverently, patiently, and with great devotion received our Lord for the first time. May we sometimes try to bring that back in our own lives, that each time we receive the Blessed Sacrament, we do it with the awe and respect that we had when we were children. I also ask and invite the parents to make sure that the children receive regularly. They should be at Mass on Sunday. Though they don't get Mass passes, Christ keeps track of these things in heaven for us. <laughs> don't deprive them. There's no game that is more important, no social event that has more importance on their immortal souls than them being together in the body of the church each Sunday, worshiping God as he commands us to do. And the Lord be with you. And with, and with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in God. Protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world.